We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Space Down Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for hanging on out with us. We really do appreciate it. I want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight. We got to get to some UFOs here. And that means only one thing and one thing only. The fedora wearing John Hudson and the unbiased UFO report. I love your theme song, man. Love your theme song. Little Bumblefoot there. It should be louder. Out with the day after. Oh, it just feels good. Feels good. John, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here. Always good to have you here, my friend. And, and you know, lots of UFO news coming once again. You know, I mean, I don't know where you are finding all of this story, but now we're looking into AI and technology to try and identify ufos yeah so so and and let me say that that there's going to be more evidence on more uh, information about this in about two days um uh max is um uh oh and i you know what i i apologize i forgot max's last name i i will include a link to his work in in, in my notes but is that um, max he was Moskowitz? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and he was a gentleman did the interview with Lou um, I- I- over over there, and um, and so he's going to be releasing a video in two days where he covers the presentation that Lou Elizondo did, where he goes into more detail about this tool. But I wanted to kind of get people. Um, I'm sh- I, you know I, I'm sure a lot of people were a little confused when I brought up the other day, and so I wanted to just take just one minute and just kind of explain how why a tool like this can work. Okay. Yeah, so for those of you that aren't aware of how machine learning works, the, the big difference and machine learning is just what normal people call AI um, is that, you know, with a normal program, you just put data in and you get data out with machine learning. You put data in, you get data out, you take the data out and you shove it back in to where it comes in again and you loop it thousands upon thousands upon thousands of times. And so you don't tell it anything. You let it learn. So let me give you an example how this tool would work. If you take thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pictures of every plane, every balloon, every bird, every this, every that, every cloud, every this, and you spend, and you can spend months during the learning process and you feed these into this learning program, right? This learning algorithm, it will learn what normal looks like, right? Then you can go in and you can feed it GPS coordinates and locations and updated maps on what mountains are where, at what angle they'll be at, what angle, depending on where you are and so forth. And then essentially what you're doing is now you've baselined normal. You know what normal looks like. And so anything outside of normal lights up like a, like a Christmas tree. And so what this tool is going to do is it's going to provide a way where you can take a video that you've taken of, of what you think is a UFO and submit it to this tool and it will chew on it and it will use all that it's learned to figure out what it's not. And this is going to get us to a much closer place where we can fast fail things quickly. We can stop arguing to such fine green tailed levels about certain aspects of of the video. And we can have some confidence that what we're posting to Twitter or YouTube already has a little bit of credibility to it because you've put it through this tool. So if I get this right, what they're doing is by by magnifying all the airplanes, the fighter jets, weather balloons, satellites, birds, whatever is in the sky, they are they are basically creating algorithms to what those are and what their trajectories are, their sizes are. Am I right with this? Yeah, and and it's essentially it it's you're basically you're you're teaching it everything that's normal, right? And, and once it knows what normal is, I mean, just like you could baseline your, your electricity in your house over, over the course of a year and you'll know every July what's normal. And if someone's tapping power out your back door, it, you're going to see it right away. It's going to stand out like a sore thumb, right? Because you know what normal is. And so this learns normal through a machine learning algorithm 
And from that normal, things that aren't normal show up. And then the example Lou gives in his, Lou Elizondo gives in his presentation, um, it looks like a UFO. It really does. And it ends up being um, a tent, if I remember correctly, um, something really mundane. So you, you, you actually get to see how the tool works. That is very, very cool. Very cool. When can we see a launching of this or is it already here? Um, my understanding is that it's still in development. Um, Lou Elizondo said that he's not the one developing it. He is consulting with it. Um, there, there is a, a demonstration of the tool uh, in, in Elizondo's presentation. But as far as actually when the tool will be available, I don't know. I do know his plan is to roll it out worldwide because one of the things he specifically said, and this language speaks to you, Dave, is he wants to take the narrative out of the hands of governments and put it into the hands of the people. Well, I mean, that's a brave thing to say. It, it and is. this is a government project. The chances of that happening are slim to none. I understand his want, but there is a need as well. Well, yeah, and my understanding is this is not a government project. Really? This is a, pri this is a private project, yes. Oh, okay, so let me ask you this. With this private project, we've seen the rise and fall of Skyhub. We've seen the rise and fall of other programs that were going to be the next best thing. Why should we put faith that this project is going to come to light? Because of the fact that um, if you have any experience with open source projects, um, there's, um, there's a momentum and an energy level um, management issue. And so when you have a figurehead that has charisma or has pull, it's amazing how they can drive a project to completion. It'll it it can it'll blow your mind. You, you you can see really bad projects succeed and really good projects fail because they don't have someone who's really motivating them to come to come to fruition. Wow, wow, that that's pretty cool. Good job on that one, John. Really cool good stuff. job on that one. All right, let let's move on to our next topic tonight, and. You know, the UAPTF, we know that is now being dissolved for a, a new office for UAP research. What, what's some of the changes that you're seeing? Well, I, I want to caveat that, that, that this is one of the things that we're going to get to right after this is that, is that there are two different bills. OK, so the bill that we read the other day, that's the House bill. Right. The Senate bill is different. But assuming the House bill prevails, which personally I believe it will. Um, then this is what I want to talk about now because this is really cool. So previously, the uh, UAPTF was in the uh, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, and it was being uh, b cared for by the U.S. Navy, okay? And so the Undersecretary of, of Defense Intelligence is basically a, a group underneath the, the Secretary of Defense. Now, I don't mean to, to speak negatively about the, the people that run that organization. They're, it's a very high-ranking organization, but it's still not SECDEV. It's still not the primary organization. The proposal that the House is giving is to essentially move and it's now establish the UAP department or whatever they're going to call it actually directly into the office of the secretary of defense. So this not only takes it out of a intelligence specific organization, but puts it under the person that drives the entire DOD. Okay. So it's an upgrade. Is this good for yes. UFOs? Yes, yes, yes. For for multiple reasons. One, because as 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 much as I will usually um, uh, uh, lean toward an intelligence organization, just due to the capabilities they usually have, they still have one point of view. Okay, um, the Secretary of Defense must look at things through many, 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 many angles, not just intelligence. And so it, it we're, you're going to have someone who's taking a much more um, holistic view um, to to what's going. I mean, it, look, it's still a DoD program, right? I mean, let's be honest here, right? But what you have now is a is a much more senior person with a lot more control and a much bigger view of the tent overseeing the program. Okay. So isn't there any danger between getting all of this politics and and defense? Uh, contractors and everybody involved in UFOs? Of course, but here's the thing. Um, you know, one of the things that this whole movement is completely lacking is credibility. 
And while a lot of us in this community may uh, have, a, you know, some shade thrown toward the intelligence or the DOD organizations, the truth of the matter is, is that in the general population, in the world population, if if the U.S. military says something and the U.S. president says something, it, it has it has clout. It has credibility to a certain degree. And so having them as a partner is a really good thing. Being dependent upon them is not. Okay, so if I get this straight, they're taking the UFOs away from the alphabet agencies and putting them under the Department of Defense. Am I correct on that? Or no, the other no, yeah, yeah sorry. There? No, so, sorry, no, it, 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 it does get very confusing. So basically, the, the, all the alphabet agencies are, well, most of them anyway, are, are, are outside of this, right? Um, they're 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 outside of the DoD, um, uh, except for certain agencies um, like the DOE and, and um, I believe the NSA. And it, uh, it gets it gets very confusing. There are several intelligence organizations within the DoD. There are several intelligence agencies outside of the DoD. Most of the ones that you hear people talk about are outside of the DoD. There are some of them that are inside the DoD. This Undersecretary of Defense of Intelligence had purview over things like the D the DOE, um, but it doesn't have purview over, per, say, uh, perhaps, the, uh, for example, the CIA. Okay, what, what kind of changes? And this is where I get curious with this, because, you know, I think it's great that we're finally going to see a public forum that this is getting public funding, public support, support from the government. What could shoot this down? What could bring this bill out of the out of your Congress or out of your Senate and throw it to the garbage. So um, I so th there is a small small chance someone could shoot at it, right? Uh, or, or Rand uh, or Rand Paul, someone like that, right? But um, I would say the bigger risk is that essentially there has to be a consolidation. There has to be a, a point where they take the two bills and they they merge them together. Okay, there are priorities that everyone has as to what they do. There are timelines they have to do this integration. So you could get down to a point where they're so rushed, they have so much left to do that they're moving too quickly. And for some reason, they end up taking the Senate language over the House language. And the problem with the Senate language is it's not bad. It's the exact same thing we've had up till now. All the Senate did was just carbon copy what we've already had in there into their side of the bill. Whereas the House, they actually wrote something new that was much more aggressive and much more detailed. And so realistically, they should take the more detailed one over the one that is pre-existing because all they did was just carbon copy it. But depending on schedules and priorities and so forth, it could get dropped out the bottom just depending on, on how much, you know, how, how stringent the workload is. Okay. I would say that bureaucracy is a bigger risk to it than, than someone targeting it. And what is the purpose of the more aggressive uh, bill? What What is the big difference between the two? Is, well, it it's, is it money? Is it technology? Is it who is involved? Oh man, it's 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 like the difference between getting like regular old cookies and like the most magical cookies you could love. Um, it basically, uh, I highlight um, in the what I'm going to post. I'm going to highlight the areas of it that I think are are, are really interesting. But it's. It's in the House bill that they specifically call out the different um, ints that they need that they need data from. It's in the House bill that they specifically call out the harm it's being done to to humans and wanting to research that. It's in the House bill that they specifically call out and say that any downed craft that have been recovered that are being converted to any technology must be reported on. All the details, all that stuff that we talked about the other night that, that I was so excited about, that only exists in the House one. Okay, so when it comes to crash retrievals, and, and we're going to change topics right after this, when it comes to crash retrievals, do we really believe that if there is a crash retrieval, let's say a UFO crashes in North Dakota, do we really believe that that is going to make it to public consumption? Yeah, well, it, but it's, it, it depends on so many things, Dave, right? Because the thing is, is that, you know, you take that thing apart, right? And and sure, any kind of any kind of technology they derive for it that's going to be weapons focused, it'll disappear. And in 30 years, it'll show up on a plane and everyone will be like, wow, look what we invented, right? But there will be all sorts of other things that you learn from it that 
they don't. So you take, for example, there's a there's a a a, a type of of um of foldable um, memory metal that um, Battelle produces. Okay, um, that memory metal. Um, there's strong suggestions that that was derived from a recovery. Okay, we don't know that for sure, but there's hints, right? That memory metal goes into people's prosthetics. Right. That memory metal goes into all sorts of products that we use today that are very, very good for all of us. So we already have possibly seen it come to fruition in the public, but we'll claim credit for it. Absolutely. 30 seconds. Your thoughts on Elon Musk raising a storm on Twitter. I'm going to have a uh, story on this on the news next, but basically saying UFOs are out there. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I, I'm gonna be the negative one today, and um, I, I'm, I, I just, I couldn't take this seriously because if, if you look at the actual message, it was, it was Elon talking about um, a height to video pixel directly needing groups of classifications uh, for pixels into objects, and he makes a joke about UFOs, and then he follows it up with the, I'm not saying there are UFOs, but there are UFOs, which is just a redo of the meme. Of um of Giorgio um uh, what's his name Suclos and so essentially it, I think he's just trolling the guy I mean I really do I think he's just trolling the guy I don't I don't think it was serious but no one cares the people want Elon Musk to be on the side of UFO uh, Twitter so people are so conflicted because they think Elon's so smart and he knows so many things but then he doesn't believe in this and it's like it makes them mad and they they want to merge that together badly. All right, John, we'll talk to you in a couple nights' time. Thank you for another wonderful, unbiased UFO report. Stellar job, my friend. Thank you, sir. You guys have a good evening. All right, take care. That's Stetson John, otherwise known as Fedora John. Let's get to the news.